My husband and I had signed separation papers. The man told me that he never wanted to speak to me or see me again, that it was never going to happen, that once he makes a decision, he never changes his mind, and that the only thing he wanted to talk about was logistics, to telling me that I was the love of his life and that he would do anything for me just 55 days later. So if you want to learn how to manifest your specific person back, then stick around. Hello, beautiful soul. Welcome back to my channel. This is Pri, your manifestation coach. And in this video, I am going to be breaking down exactly how I manifested my specific person back. But first, if you would like to get one-on-one -on -one coaching with me to help you manifest your specific person, you can sign up for coaching by clicking the link below in the description box. I also offer an online course, Manifest Your SP Mastery, that is very accessible, that you can get instant access to by also clicking the link below in the description box. Okay, let's get back to this video. How to manifest your specific person back. Now, before I share with you exactly what I did, I first want to share a little bit about what my circumstances looked like, what my 3D reality was telling me. So I was in a position where my husband had told me that he never wanted to speak to me again. The only thing that he wanted to talk about was logistics. So I couldn't even have a conversation with him that it was never going to happen. I was also on a time crunch. So once we had signed separation papers from the day that we signed it, I think I had like 45 days before I had to leave the house. So from a 3D perspective, everything seemed so final. It seemed like me and my husband were getting a divorce and that, that was it, that was the end of the road. However, I turned everything around in just 55 days. So the first thing that I wanna to bring to your attention is that it doesn't matter what your 3D reality is showing you, circumstances really don't matter. Everything can change within a blink of an eye. When you first change what is going on up here in your mind, when you change the way you think, your 3D reality must change to reflect back to you, the new version of you. So let's talk a little bit about how to actually manifest your specific person back. So Manifestation is all about saturating your subconscious mind with a new story that implies you have your specific person. So this is about you thinking as if you are the version of you that has your specific person. When you saturate your subconscious mind with a new story that implies you are the version of you that has your specific person, and this becomes the dominant story within you, your subconscious mind always, 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 always has to produce proof of this in your 3D reality. Now, how do you saturate your subconscious mind with the new story? This is accomplished through affirmations. So every time you are thinking a thought, you are affirming. An affirmation simply means the thoughts that you are thinking. And on average, you are thinking at least 70,000 thoughts a day, which means you're affirming on average 70,000 times a day. And so the idea is you want to be predominantly affirming that you already have your specific person. You want to be thinking as if through affirmations that you are the version of you that has your specific person. And the more you do this so that it becomes dominant within you, your subconscious mind has to produce proof of this in your 3D reality. So let's talk a little bit about affirmations. What are you affirming? So there's two things here that you want to keep in mind. Number one is you're going to fix yourself concept. And number two, you're going to fix your assumptions about your specific person. So your self concept is simply how you see yourself in general when it comes to love and relationships. So regardless of your SP, when the subject of love and relationship comes to mind, how do you see yourself? Do you see yourself as lovable, worthy and good enough? Or do you see yourself as somebody who is not pretty enough, not smart enough, who is not lovable, who is not worthy, who is not good enough, who is never prioritized, who is never chosen? Because 
if you are somebody right now that has a very low self-concept, then this is the first thing that we are going to fix. Because when you begin to change the way you see yourself so that you know your worth and value, your specific person is going to reflect this back to you. The second thing that you're going to fix is your assumptions about your specific person. So this is all to do with the specific stories that you have around your specific person. So do you have stories such as my specific person loves me, they adore me, they always treat me like a queen? Or do you have stories such as my specific person is a fuckboy, they're a player, they're not ready for commitment, they hate me, they never treat me right, they're always disrespecting me? What specific story do you have around your SP? So the way that we're going to fix these two things is you're going to curate four affirmations for your self-concept and four affirmations for your assumptions around your SP that imply you are the version of you that has your specific person. So when I was doing this, the four affirmations that I used for my self-concept was as follows. I am always prioritized. I am always chosen. I am always loved and I'm always respected. Now you don't need to get neurotic about this. I want you to think of your affirmations as a symbol. So one affirmation can imply 10 things for you. Like when I am saying I am lovable, for me that implies I am good enough and I am worthy. And it's the same thing with when I use the affirmation, I'm always respected. For me, that implies I'm always treated like a queen. So don't get too neurotic about saying the exact right thing, because at the end of the day, your subconscious mind knows what you are implying when you are affirming. So get clear on what are your new four affirmations when it comes to your self-concept. So that you become the version of you that really knows your worth and your value, you're feeling empowered, you're feeling confident, safe and secure. Now we're gonna do the same thing with your assumptions about your SP. You're going to curate four affirmations that imply you are the version of you that has your specific person. So for me, the four affirmations that I used is we are in a happy, committed relationship. I am the love of your life. You are obsessed with me. Now when I say obsessed, I don't mean stalkerish obsessed. I mean, you treat me with respect, you treat me like a queen, so obsessed like in a cute way, where you're always prioritizing me. And my fourth affirmation was, you can't live without me. Now, sometimes people ask, oh, do you have to say a specific person's name? Um, no, you don't. So you can say your specific person's name, you can say they, he, you, it doesn't matter because remember your subconscious mind knows exactly what you are implying and who you mean when you're saying he or you or they. So now let's talk about how to apply these affirmations. So I'm gonna break this down into four steps. Step number one is focused affirming and robotic affirming. So now that you're clear about what your four affirmations look like for your self-concept and for your assumptions about your specific person, you are going to apply this in two ways. Number one is focused affirming. So this is when you're going to carve out some time through your day to actually sit down and disconnect from the 3D. So for me, what this looks like is in the morning, I would carve out 20 minutes and in the evening, I would carve out 20 minutes where I would sit down, I would have a headphone on and I would have an eye mask on and on my headphone, I would have some relaxing music. I would usually, usually play like Hertz, like 432 is one of my favorite. Um, so you wanna make sure that you're listening to something relaxing. I would also have the eye mask so that I'm really just detaching completely from the 3D and I'm not distracted from the 3D. And I'm just focused on now what is going on inside of me. And what I would do is I would spend 10 minutes looping for my self concept so when I say looping, it just means repeating my self-concept affirmations for 10 minutes straight. So 
this looks something like this, okay? I'm always prioritized, I'm always chosen, I'm always loved, I'm always respected, I'm always prioritized, I'm always chosen, I'm always loved, I'm always respected. And I would just loop that. I would say it out loud. You can say it in your mind if you want to. I would just say it out loud because it would help me to focus more. And I would do that for 10 minutes. So I'd put a time and I'd do that for 10 minutes. And then I would do exactly the same thing, but this time I would be looping for my positive assumptions about my husband. And so again, I would set a timer and I would do that for 10 minutes. And I would do this in the evening too. And if I had any more spare time throughout the day, I would do the same thing. Okay, I would sit down and put aside 20 minutes. Sometimes I would even have like bubble baths in the evening where I would set a timer and it was very relaxing. I would have some music on and I would just be looping. So again, I would split it into half, 10 minutes for self-concept, 10 minutes for my affirmations about my specific person. And then the second part to this is robotic affirmations. So this is when you are looping on automatic mindlessly. So focused affirmations is, you know, when you're sitting down, you're focused and you're present with your affirmations, Robotic affirming is when you're just affirming mindlessly. Now there is um, a specific way in which to do this. So during the day, there will be times when you are doing specific habitual tasks on automatic where you don't have to think, such as washing the dishes, having a shower, walking your dog or driving. These are things that don't require you to think. It's things that you just tend to be doing on automatic. And here's the thing about when you're doing things on automatic. The veil between your conscious mind and your subconscious mind is really thin. This means that wherever you are affirming during this time, your subconscious mind is more easily going to accept it because your brainwave goes into something called alpha state. And so it's more receptive to whatever you are affirming and looping. So every time i would be doing tasks on automatic this was a cue for me to robotically affirm so when i say robotically affirm is i would just be affirming for my self-concept i wouldn't affirm for my assumptions about my sp it would just be for my self-concept because ultimately if you don't fix your self-concept then you're going to be feeling shitty about yourself throughout the day number two you might be able to manifest your SP, but you won't be able to keep it. So solidifying your self-concept is really the key to actually sustaining the relationship. So I would just focus on my self-concept when I was doing these tasks on automatic. I would not loop for my specific person. It would just be self-concept. And I wouldn't care about feeling it real. I wouldn't care about if I believed it or not. I would just mindlessly affirm because what you will notice is when you're doing tasks on automatic, if you were to pay attention, that is actually the time when your mind begins to think of worst case scenario, like by itself, because it's just trained that way. Like if you were to really pay attention, you would see that when you're washing the dishes or when you're driving, you're thinking, oh, specific person hates me, specific person doesn't love me, I can't believe they said this, I can't believe they did this. That's when you're like bitching to yourself in your mind and you're having an inner conversation where you're bitching about your specific person. And the idea is we wanna flip this around. So for me, when I was doing habitual tasks on automatic, this is a cue, oh, I need to robotically affirm. So I would just be mindlessly affirming, I'm always prioritized, I'm always chosen, I'm always loved, I'm always respected, I'm always prioritized, I'm always chosen, I'm always loved, I'm always respected. And as mentioned before, you don't have to believe your affirmations, you don't have to feel it real, I wasn't trying to make anything happen, like feeling wise, I was just robotically, mindlessly affirming. Because here's the thing, remember that your subconscious mind will always produce proof of the dominant story you are feeding it, regardless of the emotion, regardless of if you believe it or not. Now, when I was doing focused affirmations, what I would tend to find when I was doing that is that the feelings would naturally come because when I was focused and I was really present, you know, the emotions always follow your thoughts. So when I was dedicating focus time to my affirming, I would feel a shift in my emotions. I would feel so much better. So that is step one. Step one is focused affirming. 
um, robotic or farming. And when you're doing this, you are saturating your subconscious mind with a new story. Something that I will mention at this point is when you begin to affirm at first, your mind will want to reject it. Your mind will tell you this is not true. You might even be feeling negative emotion. This is actually normal because you want to understand that your old stories, your old negative assumptions, your old shitty self-concept is currently what is dominant within you. So the minute you begin to affirm, I'm always loved, I'm always prioritized, your mind is going to try to reject it. This is normal. The key is to persist in your affirmations anyway. That's how you're going to rewire your brain. That's how you're going to create the new story and make it dominant within you. You persist anyway. So at first it takes discipline, but after a while it will get easier. Let's now move on to step number two. Loop and persist no matter what. Now, this is where so many people trip up in the process. So people will begin to affirm and then they'll be like, it's not working, it isn't here yet. And the thing that you want to remember <laughs> when it comes to this is you can't expect to affirm for five minutes and then think that your manifestation is going to be here. Because remember, your old stories is currently what is dominant within you. So your job is to persist with your affirmations and keep looping them no matter what is showing up in your 3D reality. So for me, what this looks like is I would be looping for my focused affirmations and I'd be looping robotically. And sometimes in the 3D, my husband would come up to me and say, so when are you moving out? What are your plans? So my 3D was showing me the opposite of what I wanted, although I had been affirming. And do you know what I did? I kept affirming anyway. I persisted with my loops anyway. So when my husband was asking me this, I would keep my answers very short and high level. Like, I'm not sure yet, I will let you know. But in my mind, I was looping for my self-concept. I'm always prioritized, I'm always chosen, I'm always loved. I'm always prioritized, I'm always chosen, I'm always loved. So I would continue to loop this no matter what was showing up in my 3D reality. That's something else that I want to note here is that the only time I would actually affirm for my husband was the focused affirming sessions. Outside of that, I was always looping for self-concept. So my 3D reality was showing me the opposite. I'm looping for self-concept. That's like the main thing that you want to fix. So I would really focus on increasing my self-concept. So that was like the priority. So every time my 3D reality showed me the opposite, I would completely ignore and I would keep persisting and looping. What this also looked like is anytime doubts would creep up, I would persist in loop. So this isn't working, I would persist in loops. But what if it doesn't happen? I would persist in loop. But I can't believe you said this, I would persist in loop. I would persist and loop through anything that came up because ultimately you wanna minimize thinking against. Because remember, when you're thinking this isn't working, this hasn't happened, SP said this, can't believe they did this, you are affirming against what you want, right? And you are saturating your subconscious mind with that story. Oh, SP said this to me, can't believe he said this to me, what an asshole, right? You're, you're saturating your subconscious mind with that story. So you want to make sure that you're aware of it and minimize this and just keep persisting with the new story. I'm always prioritized, I'm always chosen, I'm always loved, I'm always respected. Those are my self-concepts and I just kept persisting with that no matter what. So that's step number two. Loop and persist with your affirmations no matter what. Let's now move on to step number three. Take zero action in the 3D. So remember that the key to manifesting your specific person back is to saturate your subconscious mind with the new story because when this new story is dominant within you, your subconscious mind has to produce proof of this in your 3D reality. This means that action is not required from you in the 3D. When you saturate your subconscious mind with a new story, your specific person will have a change of mind and a change of heart. And then after that, they will feel compelled to act on their new feelings. They will come to you. 
Do not go to them in the 3D and try to persuade them to be with you, try to convince them to be with you, or start taking action in the hopes that this will change their mind. No, it won't. If you first haven't changed what's going on in here, the way that you see yourself and the way that you see yourself in relation to your SD, your 3D reality cannot change. So leave the 3D alone is my message here. When I was doing this with my husband, I never tried to convince him or persuade him in the 3D. I left the 3D alone. And actually, prior to me beginning to loop and beginning to affirm, so before I actually decided I'm going to do the work, before that, I was trying to talk to him about stuff and it just always backfired. And then I finally got my shit together and I was like, okay, I'm going to start doing the freaking work. And I went all in with that. And once I made that decision, I left the 3D alone. So leave the 3D alone. Do not try to change your SP's mind by trying to convince them or persuade them or have conversations with them. Leave it alone. It will always backfire. You're setting yourself up to literally react to the 3D and be triggered about the 3D if you first haven't changed what's going on in here. So leave the 3D alone. Persist with your affirmations. Focus on your affirmations from the knowingness that when you saturate your subconscious mind with a new story, your 3D reality has to change. To reflect this back to you, your subconscious mind has to prove to you your new story. So for me, when me and my husband got back together, how this happened was, I think it was like two days before I was supposed to leave the house, my husband said to me, oh, let's talk. And in my mind at that point, I didn't think that my manifestation was gonna happen, but it did happen in that conversation. But in my mind, I'm thinking, oh, okay, I probably like, you know, we'll book my flight now and go back to London for a bit just to reset, is what I was thinking. And it didn't mean that I didn't think my manifestation wasn't gonna happen. Like I knew that, that he would conform. I just wasn't attached to the how in the 3D and I wasn't trying to manipulate or force anything in the 3D, right? I left the 3D alone. So in my mind, I'm thinking, oh, we're gonna have a conversation now where I'm probably gonna go back to London for a bit. And to my surprise, the conversation went something like this. That is when he sat me down and told me that I was the love of his life and that he would do anything for me. And I was actually really surprised. Like I knew the manifestation was going to happen, but I actually didn't think it would happen as soon as it did. So I was actually quite surprised about that. Um, but it did. I, my message here though is that he came to me. He came to me. I did not go to him. I did not try to force anything in the 3D. So you really want to remember this. They will come to you as long as you saturate your subconscious mind with the new story. That's it. That's all that's required from you. Saturate your subconscious mind with the new story. Let's now talk about step number four. So step number four is something that I think maybe on the SP journey, um, a lot of people don't really talk about, but it's the dips. So this is to do with your triggers when you're feeling upset. When I was affirming and really focusing on my self-concept, there were days when I was flying high and I felt invincible and I felt great. And there were days when I felt like giving up and I felt like, fuck this, it's not working. Okay, the dips. The dips are normal and it's part of the process. So it wasn't sort of like, a straight line where it was just, you know, roses and puppies every day. <laughs> there were days when I was upset or I was triggered about stuff because in the 3D, I had to witness my husband conforming, but there were days when the version I was experiencing of him was him being an asshole, where he was showing zero compassion. And so that would trigger me. So what I want to talk about here is really how to process your triggers. So if something's happening in the 3D, because maybe your SP was rude to you or mean to you, um, they said something to you, or even if you're just triggered because maybe they haven't contacted you, whatever it is, 
let's talk about triggers. So firstly, triggers are normal. Triggers do not stop you from manifesting your SP. If you're feeling triggered, don't freak out. The key to this is actually to honor the fact that you're feeling triggered. Allow yourself to have that human moment where you're feeling pissed off or angry or sad. Have a cry if you need to have a cry. The key is not to attach or associate yourself with the story. So the key is to notice that you're feeling triggered, acknowledge it, um, but don't identify with the story. In other words, you can be feeling triggered and saying, oh my God, SP said this to me, what an asshole. But at the same time, you're like, I understand it's just a story. And you're not identifying with the story, although you're feeling triggered about it. So then you have the cry, you let yourself feel all of it. And once you finish with that cry, once you finish screaming, if you're pissed off and angry, you go back to your loop. So for me, what this looked like was my husband would say something that would trigger me or piss me off. And I'd run up to my room crying, have my little cry. But once I was done with that cry, I began to loop. I'm always prioritized. I'm always chosen. I'm always loved. I'm always respected. I'm always prioritized. I'm always chosen. I'm always loved. I'm always respected. I would go back to my loops. And that's the key. So when you're feeling triggered, it's okay. But my question to you is once you've given yourself that moment to feel the trigger, what are you doing? Are you going back to the old story where you're bitching and complaining or are you affirming? Because remember the goal is you want to saturate your subconscious mind with the new story. So for me, I always come back to my loops from the understanding of, of this is what is going to change my state of consciousness. Also, what I will mention is if I was feeling annoyed or irritated or angry, I would actually affirm through that. However, if I was feeling like I needed to cry, I wouldn't affirm through that. That's when I would just allow myself to have the cry. But once I finished, I'd go back to the affirming. I would persist in my loops no matter what. So if you're feeling triggered, it's okay that you're feeling triggered. Honor the trigger, have your moment, but then the key is to come back to your loops. That is what is going to change your state of consciousness. You know, the way that I like to think about this is, let's say that the manifestation of having your SP is here and you're trending upwards. So as long as you keep persisting with your loops and affirmations, you're always trending upwards. But it's not a straight line, right? Sometimes there are dips along the way, but you're still trending and moving upwards. That's the way that I like to think about it. So it's okay that you're feeling triggered. It's okay that sometimes you're feeling pissed off. Keep persisting and affirming no matter what. Honor the trigger if you're feeling like crying, um, but then come back to your loops. Now my final words to you is that circumstances really don't matter. They really don't. It took me 55 days, but you know, in reality, it was actually 28 days because I only started affirming like later on down the line. Initially, when me and my husband split up, I was grieving, I was really upset. Um, and then I finally decided to get my shit together. And from the day I started affirming, specifically if I was to count it from then, it was actually 28 days, right? But the time from when me and my husband split up to when we got back together, that was 55 days. So my message to you here is that your 3D reality can change very quickly. This does not have to take time. If you really want it, if you really want to manifest the version of your SP that you desire, then you have to be disciplined with your thoughts. You have to keep persisting with your self-concept affirmations, no matter what. You have to think as if you're the version of you that has your specific person, no matter what. You have to saturate your subconscious mind with that new story. When you do this, your 3D reality will change very quickly. They will have a change of mind. They will have a change of heart. Your circumstances really don't matter. I think somebody commented in the comment section about how um, their husband and them split up as well, but they thought that things were easier for me because I lived in the same house as my husband, whereas they've had zero contact from their husband and they're not living together. I made to tell you that it doesn't matter. Okay, do not limit yourself. It doesn't matter if you and your specific person live on the opposite side of the world. 
doesn't matter because once you saturate your subconscious mind with a new story, your subconscious mind has to produce proof of it in your 3D reality. So it doesn't matter if they told you they hate you. They never want to see you again. That You're the worst thing that ever happened to them. That they're not in love with you. None of that freaking matters. The only reason why they even said those things to you to begin with is because of your old assumption. You manifested the version of them that rejected you. They didn't actually reject you from a higher level perspective, yes, in the 3D it may appear that way, but you had stories that caused them to reject you. No specific person does not have free will in your reality. I'm not going to go into what I mean by that in this video. I have another video of that on my channel. This is why your specific person does not have free will in your reality. That is 30 minutes long, where I really break down what I mean by this. But Ultimately, you want to understand that your specific person does not have free will in your reality. Therefore, the minute you begin to change what is going on up here in your mind and you begin to tell that new story no matter what and saturate your subconscious mind with that new story no matter what, they will conform in the 3D no matter what. That's it for this video. Thank you so much for being here. I love you. I appreciate you. Have a beautiful day or a wonderful evening. Mwah.